Hey everybody, welcome back. This is episode number four and our first boss battle that is not a gym leader. I decided I would go ahead and record our um, battle against the leader of Team Magma, Maxi, as well as one of his lieutenants, Courtney. Um, before we do that, we have our sixth and final member of the team. This is Jest the Lapras. I haven't trained a Lapras in I don't know how many years since I was a kid probably. But it's uh, one of my favorite Pokemon and I'm very excited to train a new one. Actually, has some pretty good moves including Freeze Dry, which was a bit of a pain to breed onto Lapras, but uh, I think it's a good move, so probably worth it. Um, and Lapras's characteristic is somewhat of a clown, which is the meaning behind the nickname Jest. And if I did mention it last time, um, Thrasher likes to thrash about, so pretty self-explanatory. But let's go ahead and see if our water type can douse some of Team Magma's fire type Pokemon. Also, if I said Courtney, I meant Tabitha, one of the one of the Magma admins. Yeah, it's you. You're the one who tried to interrupt me. Tabitha, at Meteor Falls. D do you intend to get in my way once more? Ah, uh, you're really, 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 an obnoxious child, aren't you? Ah, I will crush you so that you never get in my way again. All right, well... We've only met this guy once before at Meteor Falls today. Um, short double battle against him and one of the grunts. Figured I wouldn't bother recording that one, but apparently he's really mad about losing. So let's see how mad he is after he loses a second time. All right, level 23 versus 24. So only one level difference. Uh, nothing is super effective. So I think freeze dry with a base 70 power will be our best move. All right, about half of its HP. It does have a small chance to freeze, like 10%, I think, but didn't quite get the freeze there. Now, let's see. Will two freeze drives be enough? Yes, it is. All right. Good job, Jest. Got some XP and Numel. Okay. So, Numel is a fire and ground type, so should be doubly weak to our water pulse. All right, just like that, down goes Noom. That's funny, because I think last time he had a Mightyena, or maybe it was the uh, Grunt that had the Mightyena, but actually pretty weak for an admin. Yet again, yeah. I knew you would be strong. What a shame, though. The meteorite we got from Professor Whoever is already in our boss's hands. Where's the boss, you ask? Ah, yes, yes, right this way. Oh, I do hope you can be shown Team Magma's true power. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. All right, let's very quickly, I'm going to, um, let's see, let's use like a berry just to heal up that little bit of damage we took, or two berries, and let's put actually, uh, let's give Tempo a chance at the lead. All right. And there's Maxi, up to no good. The power contained in the meteorite. If we merge the explosive energy contained within the planet's core with the meteorite's power. I remember those eyes, and the indomitable will that seems to burn behind them. Ah, now I recall. You are the one who defied us at Slateport's Oceanic Museum. And your presence here tells me that you have defeated Tabitha. Yes, I see now that the stirring of interest I felt was not misplaced. <laughs> you show true promise. Fine, I will attempt to educate you. Thousands of years ago, there lived a most powerful being that was said to be capable of creating new lands on the planet. The power which we in Team Magma seek. The power which we can expand the, with this, this power, which can expand the available landmass, belongs to a legendary and super ancient Pokemon. Though it now slumbers, having lost the source of its power and been trapped in a deep sleep. So what is it that we must do to awaken this slumbering giant? Our research has led us here to Mount Chimney. Yes, here, to this very meteorite. If we create the right conditions, we should find ourselves able to alter this meteorite's qualities. Yes, even into a megastone. Even into a keystone. And here at Mount Chimney, hmm, I should not say too much. That is the end of today's lesson. Now then, I believe it is time we begin. The time for the purge has come. I do believe that I made myself quite clear when we were last in Slateport. I warned you that any fool standing in our way would be met without mercy. I will bury you by my own hand. I hope you appreciate this honor. All right, bring it on, Maxi. 
Our first battle against the Team Magma boss. And actually, uh, somebody I didn't get to face in my Alpha Sapphire Let's Play, since in Alpha Sapphire you face Team Aqua and not Team Magma. Alright, so Tempo versus Mightyena, and oh, it's unfortunate that we have uh, that attack drop there. Um, so we do have Double Kick, which is super effective. Let's go ahead and use that. The yeah, after that Intimidate did not quite half. Still a good hit though. Swagger, okay, I'm glad we missed that. Swagger increases your attack by two stages, but also confuses you, so it could be a bit of a uh, double-edged sword. Let's see if Maxi has any potions here. And Assurance is dark type. Luckily we have fairly good defenses. And no potions, all right, very good. Got a crit, didn't really need it, but good job anyway, Tempo. And his second Pokemon is Camera. I think that's probably his best one. Yeah, level 27, I imagine so. Now, our attack is still down, but we do have Dig, which is super effective. And I did give Tempo the Expert Belt, which makes him do more damage to uh, Pokemon when he uses super effective attacks. All right, I'm glad I used Earth Power and not like Earthquake or Magnitude, which can actually hit you underground. And, of course, being Poison-type, this will do a lot of damage. Okay, knocked us out. Um, I could bring in Jest, because Jest is doubly super effective with water. But um, let's mix up a little bit here. Let's go ahead and bring in Clever. Being a Flying-type, Clever will be immune to his ground-type attacks. Of course, he might have, like, fire attacks as well. Um, did teach Clever some new moves using the uh, TMs from Slateport. But let's start with the sand attack just to lower his accuracy, because I know it's always a pain when my accuracy is lowered, so let's see how they like it. All right, Lava Plume did a decent amount of damage. We do have an Orin Berry. Will it be enough to take another one? My guess is probably not, but maybe he'll miss with that uh, sand attack. All right, not a lot of damage there. Nope, not quite enough to survive. All right, um, let's send out. Simon is not very effective. Finnick is weak to fire. Let's send out Thrasher. Oh, actually, Thrasher's weak to ground. Well, if we lose Thrasher, we'll just bring out Jest, and that should be a uh, nice, easy work here. But we do have Dig, which is super effective, so let's use that. And we are faster, which is good news. Otherwise, we might be knocked out by this one Earth power. Will Dig be enough? Yes, it is. All right. Good job, Thresher. Nicely done. And level 24. That will be very helpful because we have a pretty strong gym leader coming up in the near future. And a gold bat. All right. Poison and flying type. Let's go with Rock Tomb. Up, gold bat is faster. And we are now confused. Will we hit through confusion? Stay tuned to find out. We will not. Oh, that's unfortunate. Our uh, high attack stack kind of came back to bite us there. No pun intended. All right, the good news is Air Cutter is not very effective. I'm betting Goldbite doesn't have any uh, good attacks against a rock type. Oh, unlucky again. Yeah, sometimes when I get confused, I just switch because, like, it's not worth the, uh, the coin toss. But I was thinking here that with the type of advantage, we could probably just power through it. Come on, Thresher. Yes, okay. Will it hit? It will hit. Now, I don't know if it'll be a knockout. It will, okay. I was going to say, even if it wasn't, it would slow down Golbat, so we'd hopefully get the first attack next time, but didn't need to. He looks a little surprised. Ah, uh, you are quite capable. I fell behind, but only by an inch. And got to use most of our team there, too, so that was pretty fun. Oh, so you repulsed the great Maxi in battle. Haha. -ha. You never fail to entertain me. An excellent start. This time, permit me to unleash my full strength. Once you've tasted my Pokemon's mega evolved power, you will say goodbye to your last shred of hope. I hope he has a revive for his camera up first. Hmm? Yes, it's me. Oh? Then it is Mount Pyre. I understand. I will come at once. Saved by the bell. I am sorry to cut our battle short, but I'm afraid I must excuse myself. Such rudeness demands reparation. Take this meteorite with my apologies. 
You may do with it what you'd like. All right, interesting that he did not make it into a mega stone. And I will not forget the face of the trainer who managed to thwart me in battle. Until we meet again, Maxi, I'm sure that will not be our last confrontation. In fact, I believe there's two more, but it's been a while, so I could be misremembering. Huh? If it ain't that little scamp. But blast that Maxi, he just escaped us. And he just left behind the meteorite that he's been crazy about finding? Can't be. Could he have found out where the real orbs are hidden? That sneaky little scientific so-and-so. I'm always left watching his bony backside run two steps ahead of me. And that's Archie, the leader of Team Magma, this, or Team uh, Aqua. The opposing team to Team Magma. And the villains, or the main villains, I guess, of uh, Sapphire and Alpha Sapphire. But, alright, before we log off, I did find something in Meteor Falls earlier. And let's see if I can find it here. Here we go, a Moonstone. So I don't think there's really any reason not to evolve Tempo. So I'm going to go ahead and evolve him into another one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon, Nidoking. Haven't trained a Nidoking since, uh, I meant to look up the year because I actually have it written down. Um, but when I played my first Fire Red version, whenever Fire Red came out, so I don't know, 2005, 2006, probably around there somewhere. Actually, I don't think I got it when the game first came out, so probably 2006, 2007 ish. But anyway, it's been a long time, much too long, and I am very excited to train Tempo. I'm also excited because he has his hidden ability, so instead of Hustle, which made us occasionally miss, I have Sheer Force which um, increases the damage done by moves that have bonus effects. So it actually doesn't really work on any of our current moves, I don't think. But for example, if I teach him um, Ice Beam, which has a small chance to freeze, it loses that chance to freeze, but it gets an extra, I think, 30% damage boost. So it can make Nidoking pretty powerful. But all right, that is it for now. When we come back, we will be facing the fourth gym leader, the Fire-type user Flannery. So that should be a lot of fun. If you guys are enjoying this series, please consider subscribing and liking and all that good stuff. And I will see you again soon. Take care.